Bienvenue à tous. C'est la dernière à San Antonio. J'espère que ça vous a plu avec Victor, Marine, Pierre Gasly. Là, on va parler avec Manu Ginobili, mon coéquipier de toujours. Mais avant de commencer, euh, je vais vous montrer un peu la collection. Euh, je ne sais pas si vous vous rappelez au premier épisode, on en avait parlé un peu de ma collection Marvel, du Comics. Donc là, on a le, le Hugo Buster. Tu as, as Baby Groot là-bas, Iron Man, Captain America, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Black Panther, Captain Marvel. Bon, il y en a pas mal, hein, je ne vais pas tous vous les montrer. Euh, mais bon, peut-être, euh, on verra. On verra. Bon, maintenant, en tout cas, je vais aller rejoindre Manu Ginobili. Allez, c'est parti. Ça a duré. Il y a quatre fois, il Hi Nuno, thanks for doing this. It's, it's kind of weird to interview, uh, you know, my it's, own, it's team, a, my own teammates. It's a it's a special uh, exercise, but uh, you like very famous in France. And when I ask people, like uh, you know, we have a thing, like who do you want me to interview? You're always on the top of the list. So I was like, okay, I'm going to ask you. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, so, what you doing right now? Basically, what do you do? Because people see you at the Spurs, but we don't know exactly what you're doing. Hey, so Pop, a lot me. of questions. I ask <laughs> questions. You know, fans like what you want me to ask Manu, and they're like. What's this specifically? What uh, you do? It's a rough question. Pop asks me that every day. Um, <laughs> He's like, basically, what you doing? I'm just there. Uh, I try to contribute in any way possible. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit with the players, a little bit with the coaches. I went mm -hmm. to the coaches retreat, spent time oh, with. Oh, you did go to the coaches? Yeah, I went to oh. the coaches retreat where we. Where in, uh, we it's they, in Chicago or in Maine? No, no, no. This time they did it in Maine. In it was Maine. Pop and okay. his crew. So near I, Boston yeah, for the people I, who don't I know. I was him. there and you know, kind of thinking the way we, the team was going to play. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I was, you know, I was just giving my opinion as a former player and somebody that knows this. So you did participate. System. So I participated, I was there. Uh, so it was like three days? Three days. And uh, so uh, then I spent some time with Brian Wright mm -hmm. talking about the so team Brian player Wright development. Brian Wright is the GM of the, the GM. Spurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I do a little bit of everything, but not too much of anything. Okay. So okay. right just, now you like testing. There. So. Basically, you're testing coaching a little bit to see if you like it, and you're testing the front office, so GM, scout, all that kind of stuff to explain yeah, you know, the audience. I, I, and so right now, you're like in a little bit of both, but you don't want to commit right now because you still want to enjoy your time, I guess. Definitely. That's yeah. the summer, the great summary. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to contribute in any way possible because I, I love the, mm -hmm. the organization, uh, the, everybody in it. I've been part of it for 20 years, so it's basically my, my family too. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm learning, and then I, uh, I'll decide. So far, uh, my priority has been uh, father. Lean, do you leaning towards something? Or because oh, did you ever talk with Timmy? Because Timmy hated it. Yes. He didn't try anything. He was like, okay, I'm going. I, and he yes. tried it for one year. And now when I ask him, like, he, he hates it. I'm, I, I think you're doing the right approach, you know, like, like go slowly but surely, because me, what people ask me, Tony, why do you don't coach? I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to the schedule, like, you know, all the games and, you know, you can't choose your schedule and all that kind of stuff. What I like the most about my life right now is I can choose my schedule and that's like priceless, you know, to me. Even more, I don't care how much money you can give me, I want to basically choose my time. No doubt. And that's my priority too. I want to, I mean, there's a spring break in March and I want to go with my family skiing or to mm -hmm. Costa Rica or whatever. I guess that's uh, Thanksgiving now. Mm -hmm. My priority is you know, spending time with my family. Now, Christmas and New Year's, I want to go to Argentina. It's summer, it's beautiful there, it's all my oh, friends. that's right, it's backwards. Uh, so, uh, my kids are young, soon they're going to grow, they're going to go to college and I'll m miss them. So, mm -hmm. my priority is being a family man. And that's where I'm spending the most time. But it's hard to ignore or uh, not to give time to the Spurs because uh, I got a, the same as you, a strong tie. And mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. Pop's still there and mm -hmm. RC. So mm -hmm. you, you want to give a little bit back and, and spend time with them too. It's funny because, you know, I went to the game uh, two, three days ago and, uh, and uh, Tom James, uh, he told me like, uh, oh, it feels good to be like relevant a little bit, you know, because they were like bad, you know, for a long time. And now with Victor, uh, all the excitement, you know, is back like when we used to play. Mm -hmm. I can see the, the energy, the fans. Uh, what do you think about that? Does it make you want to like maybe do more, you know, because it's exciting right now? For sure it's exciting. Um, I mean, last year it was exciting too in a different way because we had all unproven players, a lot of rookies, mm -hmm. and you wanted to see what they were capable of doing mm -hmm. now with more responsibilities. 
Keldon before was with you know with Demar and mm -hmm. and Lamarcus at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so now he had to step up and mm -hmm. Devin the same and and now the adding. Uh, Victor and, and Jeremy already becoming more of a, of a man, right? Mm -hmm. More ready to play. So everybody's fired up. And every time you get a number one draft pick, the city gets like uh, uh, bubbly. And um, <laughs> so everybody is fired up. And I can't, just, I mean, I get questions all the time about yeah, what, what the team, do you think? Victor. What do you think? What do you think about Victor? There's mm -hmm. never been anybody like him. But what I always try to say is that, you know, he's, he's still a kid. He's mm -hmm. 19. Mm -hmm. Just got to be patient. Mm -hmm. He's going to be extraordinary, almost for sure. But, you know, there's work to be done and there's a, a process and you got to, you know, improve step by step. If we start putting responsibilities on him or expecting him to take us to the playoffs or to the finals right away, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that he got here to San Antonio is the right place for him because we're going to try to, to take it easy, to protect to him, protect him to mm -hmm. make it about the team, not just him. Mm -hmm. And um, I think everybody's on board and we are happy to have him and I'm pretty sure he's happy to be here. You've been following the progress of all the young players. You know, you talked about Devin, talked about Keldon. You think it's going to take how many years before we can like contend for a title? It's going to take Three years, mm -hmm. at least, is my guess. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some very interesting prospects, like you know, guys that can really become uh, important players in this league. But you know how hard it is to play for a championship. Mm -hmm. So you need a lot of pieces, mm -hmm. and you you need to build. And once you start building, and you uh, people f understand the potential, then you know you can add other pieces from free agency or mm -hmm. it's not easy when you don't have much to support the, that plan right now with a number one dr draft pick with that huge potential and then three, four, five other pieces mm -hmm. that are solid and already and also with a very high ceiling, mm -hmm. then you, you start believing and then maybe you know, people start seeing it. But you, you got to show it consistently and see the improvement and you know, start performing uh, slowly. One guy that is believing is Coach Pop. Uh, I never thought he will sign five years. <laughs> Amazing. So I can see that he got the excitement and he can see the, the potential. Uh, do you think Pop, you know, is the right guy, you know, to, to run those those young guys? He's, he's a beast. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be, I can't believe that he still does it with that amount of energy. Yeah. Yeah. He's another one of a kind. Um, he's not easy. I mean, even even for us towards our last years, it was not that easy to connect mm -hmm. with 19, 20 year olds because mm -hmm. it's, it's a gap, there's a gap. It's and a there's gap, a yeah. different way of communicating. Mm -hmm. he's, but he's, he's smart, he understands uh, human relationships and uh, mm -hmm. he has all his background and his history that supports him. Mm -hmm. So even kids that are 19, 20, when they are here, they understand who they are talking to and they- Gives them credit. Yeah, so um, they respond. Mm -hmm. And he usually gets the best out of them. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's amazing the, the energy that he's bringing at 74. I agree. It's amazing. Every yeah. night and going on the trips and mm -hmm. planning for you know, the 26th game of the season. I said, oh my God, how do you do it? Uh, but yeah, it's, he had a it's lot of energy at the, at the coaching retreat. Oh, yeah, he's it? fired yeah. up yeah. and he gets upset and he starts, yeah. you know, defending one point and then at the, all of a sudden he says, yeah, I understand. Yeah. And then he, he changes his opinion. Um, sometimes he tests you how strong your ideas are. So it's, uh, it's fun, but it's what he always been, right? It's uh, amazing because he like, he keeps going and the organization, I went to visit the new practice facility. I'm like, I thought ours was like nice, you know, <laughs> they went to another level. Uh, do you miss it sometimes, like playing basketball? Uh, and when you see, you know, like, like it's beautiful, the new practice site. I mean, of course, I would have loved to have that <laughs> before. Uh, when we got to the league, having that, the, the previous one, the was one that we amazing had. enough. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we yeah, loved for it. Sure, for sure. Then with time and the evolution of the NBA and the evolution of uh, analytics and mm -hmm. physiotherapy and rehab, uh, so it became small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when RC and his crew started to think about the next steps. Mm -hmm. And they came up with this that is just 
I don't I don't know if you were able to 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 shoot something in there, but it's it's amazing. Yeah, and yeah, it, we, we, I'm going to show them. It sure. gets. I mean, everybody that is in the organization is happy to go there. It's happy mm -hmm. to go there and work and stay a little longer yeah. and eat yeah. there and communicate. Mm -hmm. So kudos to, to RC for having the vision yeah. uh, and the, the, the energy and determination to make it happen. One thing is we have a vision, but then now you see it. Oh, I'm happy we still fantastic. have a parking spot over there, so it's good. We can go whenever we want. <laughs> yeah. And it's five minutes from our house, you know, it's very close. It's, uh, so it's a nice, it's a nice incredible, place to go. incredible uh, building. So we are all fired up. Mm -hmm. But basketball, do you miss it, basketball? Or are you okay now spending time with your family? I know no. you're a big family guy, but. Uh, I, I don't, I miss the. Uh, I'm going to rephrase my question. Do you feel like 95% of the athletes, they fear, like, like a little depression, you know, like a little death, you know, because for 40 years we'll tell you what to do, where you have to go, and then suddenly you can do whatever you want. It can be scary because most of the athletes, they don't know what they want to do after their career. Did you feel that depression? I was worried before making the decision of what I'm going to do with my time, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do when I don't have that pressure, that adrenaline rush, right, mm -hmm. of playing a playoff game mm -hmm. or preparing for a season. Mm -hmm. Or you know, being with the team um, after a great win or a mm -hmm. loss. So that was my main concern. Um, I was ready because of you know physically yeah. it took a lot, and you gotta be prepared, and you gotta think every detail, what you eat, how you know resting, and mm -hmm. when you go on vacations, you also have to have your plan mm -hmm. because you can't stop for three months and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I knew that was fine, but. Once I retired and I found myself with all the all that free time to explore other interests, travel more, uh, spending three months a year in Argentina instead of four weeks, mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to tell you the truth, I was in no rush <laughs> to to come back and do something full time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have a great family. I have great family in Argentina too. Mm -hmm. I I like traveling. So no, I I actually. Still surprised that I don't play basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, I play paddle, I play tennis, I, I ride the bike. I've done it enough. Uh, I gave it all I had mm -hmm. to the sport, mm -hmm. and I think I left uh, empty. <laughs> I left, and now I want to do other things. So I, I know I'm, I, I've, I've been very lucky. I, I played till almost 41. Yeah, yeah. There are some guys that can't, you know, they, are, they get hurt. Mm -hmm or they don't have a, a good situation for them to keep playing and they mm -hmm. left with something in the tank that they don't know how to, uh, where to use it afterwards. Mm -hmm. In my case, I was empty. I, I you know, 41, I was... Uh, I saw it. And I after saw all that the, you gave everything. That's you know, sure. with the team, playoffs and playoffs every year, mm -hmm. uh, national team, World Cups, Olympics, everything. So mm -hmm. I, I, I did everything I, I wanted and way more. When you look back, uh, did you enjoy like the experience of like the Jersey retirement and the Hall of Fame? Uh, did you enjoy uh, all of that? I uh, enjoy that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> the during was a little stressful for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, preparing the speeches and mm -hmm. making sure that everybody was fine, all my guests, mm -hmm. all the people that I cared mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. that I mentioned everybody, that I was graceful and at the same time thankful. Mm -hmm. It was stressful, uh, so I didn't get to enjoy the the, the previous few days or weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once it was over, oh, it was fantastic. Then you were good. Yeah. It was fantastic yeah. uh, having all the people here for the Jersey retirement, or all the people in in New York, uh, well, in Massachusetts for the event, mm -hmm. and then we mm -hmm. took a trip to New York with some of my friends. So after it happened, amazing, but during stressful. When you look back and uh, everything you accomplished with Argentina, what are you like the most proud, you know, for your country and the evolution, you know, in the NBA and the way you brought uh, Argentina on the map? What are you the most proud? It would be easy to say the, the, the gold, mm -hmm. but you know how fragile, how mm -hmm. thin the line is between mm -hmm. victory and, and uh, disappointment, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm the most proud is the work we put over two decades mm -hmm. and the, the consistency, uh, the steady, performance and excellence and, and way of of showing ourselves right and representing our country that that is my biggest uh honor mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because you know I started in '98 and finished in Rio '16, so you know, in 18, 18 years, mm -hmm. and most of those 18 years were with you know four or five guys that did you know carry a lot of yeah, load. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we, we became very close. The same, you know, we happened with the Spurs. We were, mm -hmm. Both were happening, happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, hugely proud of being part of those two uh, at the same time. Um, I think Argentina is responsible of uh, making the USA very mad and a uh, wake-up call, you know, because we talked about the gold medal. Did you watch the documentary, uh, The Redeemed Team? Yeah. <laughs> Did no. you realize how mad they I were against you? <laughs> no idea. Um, I had no idea, seriously. Did I, you laugh I when, was, you, when I was you watched smiling. it? Did you I laugh? was smiling. <laughs> um, because I started watching and then a few of my friends told me, I so said, I brought the kids uh -huh. and we watched it together. Yeah. The kids were looking at me like, hey, did, did that happen? I mean, were they that upset and they were planning so uh, the, the part of, uh, I think it was Coach K that, yeah, you know, yeah, told D-Wade yeah, and yeah. so it's, no, I had no idea that that was happening. I I thought they were, you know, they had a, a, an even better team mm -hmm. and they were fired yeah. up just because yeah. it's the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Not with, with us because yeah, yeah, we eliminated yeah. it before, but... Uh, but it was it an was argument fun. though that if you think about it, we won three championships in five years. You know, we won the championship in 2007. So that was three in five years that you can be like the best shooting guard, you know? So that's why I can understand that Kobe and he yeah, went yeah. there like this. I mean, I completely understand. And as a coach, you use every strategy yeah, possible yeah, sure. to get your players sure. fired up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun when you are on the other side yeah. of that story. <laughs> it reminded me of uh, Tony Kukoc, yeah. you know, in 92, yeah. when Scotty and Michael, they were mad yeah. at Kukoc. Yeah. It reminded me of this. So I was, I was there and I said, wow, I didn't, I had no idea. But uh, I mean, of course I felt amazing. I mean, yeah. that's, it's a great honor. Yeah, it's a huge you know, honor. Those guys yeah, you know, talking honor. about the you like that. So and everything, yeah. it was, uh, it was funny when I watched it because I had no idea. Does, uh, you talked about your kids. Are your kids, uh, like, they realize, you know, what you accomplish and, and who you are now? Now they are starting to understand more mm -hmm. after the Hall of Fame. When, when I retired, they were too little. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they didn't get it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they were almost, they were, they were seven. But they grew up going to the games mm -hmm. and seeing people asking me uh, pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they, they, for them, it was just natural, like no nothing more, special yeah. that yeah. every dad was the same. Mm -hmm. And then with time, when I really became a normal dad, that I took him to school every day, that went to mm -hmm. uh, school trips or stuff like that, and they could hear their buddies talking when I got there, mm -hmm. or their parents asking me mm -hmm. for a picture, or mm -hmm. when we go to Argentina, what happens, or that's when they started to, to slowly realize you know, what happened around my career. So. Uh, it was a slow process. Good for our kids. They can always go watch the highlights. You know what I mean? It's a lot yeah, of highlights. Yeah, now they can. They can. Because uh, my kids, they're starting to realize a little bit because they're seven and nine. And so when I bring them to school, you know, at first they were like, why are they asking you for pictures? And so it's, it's hard to yeah. explain to your kids. So that year was pretty good at basketball. <laughs> it's like yeah, weird yeah. to I, talk about yourself, you know. At the beginning, like, we used yeah. to say, ah, I don't know, because yeah. I play basketball. So. Yeah, yeah. And then slowly they, they understand by themselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once in a while they come, like, maybe they were 10. And when they, they the twins came and asked mm -hmm. me, did you catch a bat? <laughs> I'll catch a bat, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. yes, why? Who told you that? <laughs> well, one of the friends told me that you caught a bat at one time. I said, yeah, it's, you know. Not a good <laughs> memory. <laughs> yeah. I had to do a hundred tests was, after it, that. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't awesome, but um, for them, it was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, sometimes they watch basketball highlights and they, they love soccer too. Um, and they are into everything, but uh, slowly they, they they start picking it up and they understand what, what happened. The, the day my, my kid was like, you know, because I'm, I try to spend as much time as I can, you know, but sometimes it's not easy because you're doing stuff and blah, blah. And the other day I was like telling him I had to do something for our president, you know, for Macron, you know, he asked me to come and stuff like that. And, my, and Josh came to me one night, he's like, because I missed, um, I didn't pick them up uh, at school, you know? And he was like, dad, 
does President Macron is more important than me? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't know what to say, Manuel. Yeah. I was like, uh, no, no, you're more important, <laughs> you know, but you know, sometimes, <laughs> uh, yeah. But he looked at me like this, and I was like, oh, I didn't know what to yeah, answer, you know, like, it, like, um, it, like, touched my heart, amazing. you know. Uh, I was like, no, I was like, you're more important, you know, but you know, I'll try to do my best with the schedule. It's, it's it's like, awesome. They, they are, they keep you honest, yeah, and they for keep sure, you humble, for, for sure, sure. Uh, for sure. I want to stay on the on the Argentina theme. Uh, what do you think about Messi coming to the U.S. and coming to Miami? Were you happy? Did you go watch him play in Miami? Like I, I went it, and he didn't play. Oh no, <laughs> really? game, yeah. I went a couple Sundays ago. Oh, he shit. was hurt, <laughs> but I already had everything planned. I had a couple things to do in Miami, mm -hmm. so I went anyways. Okay. Uh, but it's it's great. I mean, for him after mm -hmm. after the PSG experience, I wasn't. The best and yeah, his like time up, in, up and down, yeah. in, in Barcelona, having a, a time to to calm down and maybe you know uh, play less mm -hmm. uh, and with less uh, pressure and responsibilities, mm -hmm. you know he can now just can go enjoy play it. and uh, have fun. Yeah, fun. Uh, he's the type of guy that looks like he's happy with the ball around. Mm -hmm. He needs to play, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, you can tell when when the guy enjoys, no, right? For sure. um, for sure. So of course I was happy as long as he's happy and his family is fine. Do you think Miami is a good no, no, we don't. Uh, mm -hmm. We briefly met during one of the Olympics. He played in 08, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but no, we we are not in touch. But of course, you know, deep admiration what what he's done, uh, what he does on the court mm -hmm. is like so unique. So uh, and what he brought to the country on this last World Cup. I was going to ask you, what, what, what went through your mind when Argentina wins the World Cup and you see your country like so happy, like on fire? When I mean, you know how hard it is, you know, for your country. I had many conversations with you, you know, sometimes it's tough, like the up and downs and how hard it is to like to live over there and all that kind of stuff. Like it was crazy. Like me looking at the images, I was happy for you guys. I should not say that because it yeah, was against France. Yeah, I remember, France. I remember but, we, we but, shared but, a few but, texts. But, but, but I was so happy for you because we already won it twice, you know, like recently. And so that's why I was like so happy for you, for your country, like the happiness that it brought. Uh, what did you think? How did you feel? Very hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I, I, luckily, I was there. I was in Argentina. Oh, you, were, you were there. Okay. I was in Argentina. Okay. It's, you know, mid-December this time. Oh, Usually, that's uh, right. I, that's right. I'm it was not in the summer in, you know, then. June, it was yeah. summertime over there. So it was summer. People were happy, very hopeful. Uh, Messi was very close mm -hmm. a, a few World Cups ago. Didn't mm -hmm. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Tough loss, and everybody was so hopeful. And so once it happened, I, mean, I was watching with friends and, and my kids. My kids had no idea the craziness mm -hmm. of, of soccer in Argentina, mm -hmm. and they witnessed it for the first time. So he saw our families and our friends, some like so almost happy. crying, yeah. some leaving before the penalties. Some other, you know, doing crazy cr stuff um, that they even, you know, s started to, to see and get nervous. And, mm -hmm. and we won the, the finals and we went to celebrate on the square in, in, in my city. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, I, I drop them and I look from a building upstairs. <laughs> but, uh, the kids were seeing everybody singing and families mm -hmm. and parents with their kids on top and everybody painted and mm -hmm. it was such a the festivities were incredible and then what happened in Buenos Aires when they mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. so they they could not believe that sports could bring that can bring that much joy I mean mm -hmm. that joy and the the connection in families mm -hmm. three generations usually watching games together mm -hmm. and hugging mm -hmm. and crying oh my god it was so ha so happy to have lived it in there because the last time it was eighty six. I was I know, nine. Yeah, it was a long time. I barely, long time ago. I barely yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember the nineteen ninety frustration. We got to the finals. Mm -hmm. We against Germany. But now, as an adult, as a father, and mm -hmm. seeing other my friends with their kids, oh, it, it was it was it's, amazing. It's, it's unbelievable uh, how much joy sports can can bring, you know, and. Uh, it's funny that you say that because I remember 98, you know, when France won for the first time, see the whole country, you know, coming together because there's so many like differences, you know, religion and different people, yeah. races, all that kind of stuff. And sports brings everybody together. And I remember in 98, it was like amazing, you know, and then we relived that in 2018. And so it, it made me very, uh, 
uh, like happy for you guys to 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 it, to it go to go through that. You know, so incredible. Um, they said there were three, four million mm. people celebrating. In a country with the up and downs yeah. that you mentioned, with some you know underlying crisis, mm -hmm. and basically no incidents. I mean, everybody was just yeah, just happy, happy mm -hmm. celebrating. That's it, it was, yeah, and that's they couldn't priceless. even see the players. Yeah, 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 I thought when the players were not going because they just mm -hmm. couldn't. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh my God, this can be mm -hmm. terrifying." Mm -hmm. And no, everybody yeah, was just good. in a party mode that they didn't care. So it was. I have a hard question. Awesome. Hard question for you. Do you, do you think uh, Messi passed Maradona in the hearts of the Argentinians because he was such a legend for so long, Maradona? A little bit like Pelé, you know, like you, like nobody saw them play, but they like like legends. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, it's generational. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna talk to a 60-year-old, one from 50 and above, that are gonna say that Maradona was unique. That was where he gave the country and. He's the way he mm -hmm. spoke and acted, rebellious part of him. Mm -hmm. They'll they will never get convinced that <laughs> Messi is better. And the younger ones that didn't experience, didn't live the Messi, the Maradona side of things, mm -hmm. they will always think Maradona. The, the, I, I try not to always talk about Maradona against mm -hmm. Messi. It, the remarkable thing is that we got both. Yeah, it, yeah. like it's, there's no reason why a country like ours mm -hmm. i mean yes their soccer is huge mm -hmm. but having those two specimens those two guys that are mm -hmm. so unique mm -hmm. uh we are very lucky to have them so uh we just gotta celebrate them both exactly. and be very happy that mm -hmm. and in my case i witnessed both because i remember 86 mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. 90 I, I remember way more even not 94 that for me mm -hmm. was an amazing mm -hmm. uh team uh, so uh, that's, it's nuts that we got, got those two, is those two lefties, <laughs> two lefties. out there, uh, in, in, unique, amazing. During your career, uh, what was like your, your biggest fear? And now, what is your biggest fear? Fears. Like in life, you know? During my career, I hated getting hurt. Uh, I always, not that I played, <laughs> worried to get hurt because I, I put my body out there, but mm -hmm. um, I, I hated it. So I never wanted to uh, to be out mm -hmm. uh, for six months. For mm -hmm. you know, it happened to you yeah. Yeah. Uh, once. You know, and it's not bad. Once uh, yeah, in yeah, such yeah. a long career. You think about it. Yeah. In me, it was you know, I think five weeks, six weeks, the most, mm -hmm. um, because I felt detached when that happened, right? I, I felt disconnected to the team and the thing I like always the most is, you know, being part of a team. Um, and I was pretty hard on myself and didn't take losses well early mm -hmm. on, especially. Mm -hmm. So, you know, losing, it's not a fear, but I despised mm -hmm. uh, losing. I didn't want to go through that and injuries. Uh, now, no, not much. I just, you know, when you become a dad, you just think and breathe and try to put yourself in your kids' yeah. eyes and, yeah, and you don't want kids, them to, yeah. to go through a lot of, you know, struggle or suffering yeah. in any way. Mm -hmm. A little bit is necessary because that's what life's about. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I want them to be happy and healthy and that's my biggest worry or concern. So uh, besides that, I... I've been so lucky, you know how lucky we've been. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we play basketball for a living. And after doing that for 20 years, we can choose what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. a privilege that not many people have. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, no, no fears. Um, I just, you know, uh, thankful for everything that happened on the, on the way here. To talk about that, uh, uh, about, you know, like we can choose. Do you still have like dreams, you know? Uh, it looks like you want to go to Tour de France when I look at, so, at your social media. <laughs> You're staying in shape. You look good, by the way. Uh, like, do you have dreams? Like, uh, what would be your dream now? No, actually, I have a... Um, I was so driven by the competition, mm -hmm. by the pressure, by the team, that I, I, th I think that I did it so much that I don't want that pressure anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know what? Like, I kind of feel the same way. I, I agree with you. I, like, I, agree I see, you. I see sometimes the NBA final. I watch the NBA finals, mm -hmm. and I, oh my God, look at the, the yeah. pressure of that yeah. shot or that free throw <laughs> or, the, or this possession. Yeah. 
-hmm. and we were thriving mm -hmm. in it. We all mm -hmm. loved it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess you get older and you are more risk averse and you don't want to go mm -hmm. through that. But I, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. To go and have the ball for the last possession and mm -hmm. just, you know, everybody waiting. I, I'm now I get, I get <laughs> antsy. Uh, so, uh, no, I, at this point, at least in, in life, I just want to enjoy this time, enjoy my family. Maybe when my, the kids grow older and they go to college or they get their own families, then we'll reshuffle and see what drives me. Mm -hmm. uh, now they are my drive. I'm happy at home. Um, and time will tell if it's in sports, if it's in Do they play business. Do you play basketball? Huh? Your kids play basketball? The twins love basketball. Mm -hmm. The little one loves soccer. They enjoy it. We'll see. I'll just be a fan. Do you, do you practice with them? Uh, one time, once in a while we shoot uh, or we kick uh, penalties. Uh, but yeah, I am just trying to be a, a dad that doesn't have the background that I have. Mm -hmm. So even when they play basketball, I just there watch. Mm -hmm. I don't say anything. I don't go and try to correct them or tell the coaches that they should do something else. Mm -hmm. I just let them be normal kids. And if I'm asked, then I'm, you know, I, I'm gladly ready to help. But uh, just let them, well, do what I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad loved basketball. Mm -hmm. He never, like you know, you said on. something against the coaches or tried to correct me or try. Mm -hmm. That was the, the coach's job. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to take the same approach. He worked with me. Uh, tell me about your love uh, for cycling. You really want to go to Tour de France? No, <laughs> no way. One time, does actually. Timmy, does Timmy still let's cycle with you? Once in a while. Timmy doesn't like getting up early. Okay. And we usually go at 8, 8.30. Okay. So that's why. But last so week. Wait, wait, did it, when did it start? Like, uh... Well, the, the truth is that I didn't know how to ride a bike okay. till 40. <laughs> really? Really. Um, I never rode. And I said, once I retire, I want to learn. I, I, never, I never did growing up. I walked everywhere. My city was is small and you walk mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I retired. My kids are eight and they were starting to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, they, so they knew like... and I didn't. So I said, okay, we, if not, I'll be missing big time. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn. I'm going to be writing with them. Mm -hmm. So we started writing together and then they started school and we started writing with money. Mm -hmm. So we were going uh, in the mornings, drop mm -hmm. the kids and go for a ride. And then, you know, how we do things. I wanted to go a little farther and then a little faster. Uh, my wife said, okay, see you tomorrow, I'm done. I can't keep up. And then, you know, I Fabri and made other friends on the trails. And mm -hmm. now we got a team of six, seven. Oh uh, yeah, you yeah. have a team. Yeah, we're well, a team. We have six guys <laughs> that get together, right? And then we eat a, drink a beer and get some nachos. Okay. But um, we try to do it twice a week. It's not that ah, serious. Twice a week? Yeah, try well, twice a week. Uh, yeah, it's well, a commitment. Twice yeah, a week. Yeah. But it's fun. I mean, it's healthy. Yeah. Uh, you're outdoors. I love outdoors. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you stay with some friends. It's a good chatting. way for you yeah. to stay in shape. That's oh, for, yeah, sure. for sure. For um, sure. Because uh, Timmy, Timmy does the, the motorcycle thing. You know, he goes in motorcycle trips. Tim know? does everything. Yeah. He fights. He hunts. He. True. Uh, True. Uh, I did. I, he I, went, runs. I went hunting with him one time. It was a hell of an experience. Uh, I don't like shooting animals, you know, but it was like, a, you know, a, a More. wild, no, yeah, wild hogs, you know. So they destroy my house all the time. So I was like, okay, I'll come with you. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> I one give time. one try. But I don't, I don't really like it. Yeah. I don't really like it. I don't really like but it. But Timmy, Timmy loves it. He rides. Did you, did you, ever, did you ever went to his ranch in Dry? Uh, no. No, 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 no I'm not. A, it's not my thing. Yeah, me too. It's not my thing. But, I just uh, tried once because I wanted to have the experience. We went at night, you know, with the oh, yeah. with the 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 vision, you know, at night. There's with some the, adrenaline going, right? When yeah, you, yeah, it was uh, for sure. I heard, adrenaline. I heard. I never tried. I tried one time. I will never do it again because it's not my thing. But I'm happy that I did try one time. So uh, yeah, we all have our ways to stay in shape, and and Tim is crazy too. Tim, Tim does everything. Mm. Um, if it, uh, did you ever try skiing? I tried skiing. It wasn't a great experience for me. Very traumatic. Because you know the way you I felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like falling. I one time ended up hugging a tree. Uh, and my kids were like, shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> they were jumping already on yeah. first day. And I was so frustrated. Um, but uh, so we're not going to see you in Aspen, <laughs> any, in Aspen anytime soon. Uh, on the fourth day, 
Yeah. I had the first towards the end, mm. I said, I gotta admit, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there behind the kids and we were going down the slopes. And that's when I said, yeah, this is pretty cool. But I prefer a more beach hike mm -hmm. than, you know, getting all the outfits and getting the kids ready. Parachutes, jumping from the sky, skydiving. Did you ever try it? I would love to have the courage, <laughs> have the experience. <laughs> like I just said, I would love to have but the courage. But no, bungee jumping and no, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> risk, risk averse. Um, I'm the opposite as I was in the court. <laughs> when you're in the court, yeah. So yeah, on, like the court, I, on, the court, on the court, yeah, you were fearless. I, I didn't care about my body. And I think mm. now I'm skiing and I'm thinking if, you know, yeah. there's a tree coming yeah. or a slope too dangerous. So I didn't get to, to completely enjoy it. First time we met, I don't even remember the first time we met. Remember no, the I first don't remember. time we met? I, I remember that you... Yeah, I remember the first time I saw you. It was the finals in Italy. The, the, you were playing, it was 2-2 two, two, okay. and you won in five. And that was the first time that I saw you play in the okay. EuroLeague. But the first time we met, I don't, I don't remember. I had, I to, remember be, I had to be in San Antonio. Time. Yes, uh, I came from Indianapolis, hurt, and I was not practicing early on. Mm -hmm. I remember watching you guys play. And not sure if it was the second day or the second week, yeah. but we went to have dinner. Uh -huh. And that was the first time that we sat and, and talked. And you, I remember you telling me about, um, you know, the, the experience of the first year, yeah, yeah. Um, that you bought the, the house uh -huh. in Champions something. Yeah, yeah Champions Runs. Um, yeah. And then we went to visit the house, but um, no, we had a conversation and uh, gave yeah. me a, a little bit of a heads up of what I was going to face with, with Pop <laughs> those, those few uh -huh. months. And uh -huh. I felt like you were the only one that knew me. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, yeah, with yeah. TD, when you, you first arrived, yeah, you know sure. TD. Nah, TD. TD is skeptical. He said, "Oh, who the hell is this guy?" <laughs> for sure. Uh, but not even Pop. I was, I was sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, but 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 mm -hmm. you told me you saw the final, so you mm -hmm. and knowing mm -hmm. about the European basketball, I I knew you knew me, mm -hmm. but I, I had to prove yeah, everybody, everybody else. else. Yeah, everybody else. You know that I, I was worth Especially it. Especially Bruce Bowen, who was trying to kill you every yeah, practice. Bruce, <laughs> I mean, well, he's understandable too. I mean, he was protective yeah. Yeah. of his role. I didn't yeah. know he didn't know what I could give. Yeah. Uh, same with assistant coaches; he, they had no yeah. clue. No clue. Brett yeah. Brown yeah. knew something, but he was very new. Yeah. Uh, RC, I know he trusted me, but uh, the rest, he was. Uh, a daily test. Especially right? at the time. At the time, EuroLeague didn't have the respect that yeah. they have now. There, there was when no you see, YouTube. You... When you see the evolution of European basketball now, and you see the top five players, you have three Europeans, uh, four uh, like foreigns, you know, if you count Embiid. It's crazy, the evolution of yeah. the NBA. You know, before you couldn't even watch anything. Yeah, exactly. Now you can have, you know, yeah. Victor's games were on TV here. Yeah, exactly. I know. And yeah. every kid that plays EuroLeague at 18, mm -hmm. it's already, everybody knows them. Mm -hmm. I uh, before I was, you know, twenty something, mm -hmm. and I they, they didn't I believe I that we could bring it. But um, uh, it, thanks, was, Manu. it was fun. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go practice my paddle game and my tennis game. Yes, Manu kicks my butt in tennis and paddle. I need to get better. I, I'm getting, I'm getting good in paddle. Uh, tennis, I'm losing it. Yeah, because you play more paddle. I'm playing paddle you know twice what? a week. I, I prefer paddle too now. I, I play more paddle than tennis. I don't even play tennis that much now. Yeah, uh, tennis I haven't played in eight months. One single oh, yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Paddle, I'm playing twice a week and okay. starting to. So I'm gonna forget. keep practicing and get better. Like that, you, you're not ashamed when I'm your teammate. You know? right. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we'll, we'll be better. We'll be better. <laughs> okay, TB, thanks, thanks for Nunu. having me, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Nunu. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, TB. Yep. Bon, c'est terminé sans Antonio, mais uh, vous inquiétez pas, on va revenir le 17 décembre. Il y a le match avec mon maillot où ils vont écrire le Hall of Fame sur mon jersey retired. Donc ça, ça va être un truc de malade. Donc je vous réserve plein de surprises à ce moment-là. On a aussi Los Angeles en février. En tout cas, je ne vais pas m'arrêter là. Rendez-vous le vendredi prochain dans mon studio à Paris.